life on the road as a traveling speechy. I'm between therapy appointments on my day on the road where I don't see children for online therapy and I don't see children in clinic. I see them in their schools and homes and preschools, so I'm on the road. Isn't it a beautiful view though? I have a few minutes before my next appointment and so I wanted to take those minutes to share with you my top three tips for improving communication with your child. Quite honestly, I think you could apply this to your conversations with all sorts of people, but I'm thinking about how I use it with the children that I provide speech and language therapy for and all the children that I come into contact with more generally. So it's too windy here for me to get out, so let's find somewhere that's a bit less windy so I can share those things with you. Tip number one, eye contact. You can help your child to learn the power of eye contact by waiting until they look at you before saying whatever it is you plan to say. If you wait for eye contact, it also means that your child has more control over the pace of the interaction. And whatever age or stage your child is at with their speech, language and communication development, it's gonna be really valuable if they have a little bit of ownership over how quickly the conversation progresses. So in those moments when your child is looking at something in detail, if you wait, until they look at you before you say something. Try it out, I'm sure you'll notice something interesting. My second suggestion is to ask better questions. I think it's all too easy for us to ask questions kind of automatically. And I think a good rule of thumb is if you know the answer, don't ask the question. You wanna ask a question that builds on what they're interested in, what they're thinking about. And this is challenging. It's my New Year's resolution to ask better questions. And I made a video all about the subject, which I'll link just up here. I found somewhere much quieter for my third tip, which seems appropriate for this one. All I can hear around here is the sound of the leaves and the trees. And my suggestion to you is to embrace the awkward silence. because it actually becomes a bit more comfortable over time. And when you wait those few extra seconds, it's really incredible the variety of things that come out when we don't rush in to help a child out or to give them extra prompts to help them answer a question, but if we just wait and see what happens. So really all of this boils down to giving children a little bit more time, which I think is something that we don't always have. And in some everyday interactions, we're in a hurry and we just need to get going. But if there's a moment when you do find yourself with a little bit of extra time, then I would encourage you to try out changing up the pace looking out for when your child naturally makes eye contact with you, taking the time to think about what different kind of question you could ask, and also allowing a little bit of thinking time, embracing that awkward silence and seeing what happens next. That's it for now. Thanks for joining me. If you try any of these ideas and you think that they're useful, then maybe share this with a friend or let me know in the comments below how you got on. And I share new videos every week. So maybe hit subscribe and I'll see you next week. See you then.